today we shall uh, continue with more verses of Aryabhata. We have seen Aryabhata's method of finding fig roots and nth roots. So, let me just uh, recall that, that from, if you want to find nth root, then from the right of the given nth power, call the places as nth power place, like uh, cube place or square place, vargasthana, ganasthana. Similarly, you can have nth power place, nghata. आवाज येत नहीं है Because we checked actually, and then it says that uh, it is. Uh, unable to listen. Uh, okay, okay. We will try. Pause, make a pause. So. Uh, Vargasthana Vargasthana Yamavani came to Khadata Hussain, sir. We consider nth power place and the previous places to that. So, unit space nth power place. Previous n minus 1 places are non nth power place. So, NNPP, that is what I am calling. So, NNPP 1, 2, 3, up to n minus 1. Such places are there. And then the process is the same. Number of NNPs, that is n power places, is equal to the number of digits in the n. And from the last NNP, subtract the maximum n power and write the n root of this number, say a, separately. So the n root is to be done separately in the n root place. Now divide the n, the next place, next place is not n power plus n minus one plus but n times the n minus one power of a this n minus one power of a a is the n root of n so far and get the quotient that quotient should be note that sometimes we may have to consider b minus one instead of b as the quotient as we have to subtract many terms after this now find the remainder from this successive, from the successive places, that is uh, NNPP N minus 1, N minus 2, N minus 3, up to 1, you successively subtract terms coming from binomial theory. NC2, N is to N minus 2 into B. N23, N is to N minus 3 into B, N minus 1 or 3 into B square, like that. So, such terms we are. Uh, subtracting uh, actually n c2 a raised to n minus 2 b square right? and ultimately b raised to n. So the terms in the binomial theorem we are considering and we are subtracting them. Once you subtract b raised to n, we write b at the n in the n root place. So we have already written a there and you write after that b also. Then the still numbers remain, you divide the next place by n times n minus 1 power of the number a b, the tuples number a b, which is the n root obtained so far and continue till the remainder is 0, or the, you can continue till the required number of digits in the n root are obtained. Especially for non n power, you have to decide how many digits you are invested in. Okay. Now, uh, let us go ahead. This was discussed last time. How to find out the uh, square root of a three four digit perfect square? Three digit or four digit perfect square. How to find out square root by using the last digit and using the First two digits. Okay. 
and if you want to also put it away, you can find out if the number is of up to six digits, then you can find the cube root. So the last digit of the cube root is obtained from the last digit of the given perfect cube. So uh, we know that one cube is one is ending with one, two cube is eight, three cube is ending with seven. So if in the cube last digit is seven, then in the cube root the last digit should be three. So there is unique digit associated to the cube. So last digit is obtained, and the first digit we can obtain from the second Ganas uh, Ganas So uh, initial Ganas Khan and we should be considered and find out a cube less than or equal to C, such a will be uh, largest a if you find out, then that will give you the digit. Uh, second digit in the cube. So, like 50, 653, you would separate as 50 and 653. Now, from the last digit 3, you get the large root of the cube root at 7. That's a 7. That's 7. And from 50, you see that 3 into 3 into 3 is 27. And uh, 4 into 4 into 4 is 64. That goes above 50. So, you should consider 3 there. And as the base uh, digit in the cube. So 3 and 7, these are the two digits that we get for our perfect cube. So uh, this is how we can find out the cube root. Okay, and the method also was discussed. Aryabhata's formula, what formula Aryabhata has in mind that was discussed last time. Okay. Now, the area of a triangle and volume of a tetrahedron. So, area of a triangle is correct as given by Master by Aryabhata. That is one half base into height. And then, volume of a tetrahedron, the formula given by Aryabhata is not correct. Uh, Aryabhata has written one half, but it should be one third. And this was corrected by Tamilabhata. Then the area of a circle is pi r square that was given by Aryabhata and volume of a sphere was given by Aryabhata but that formula was not correct and the correct formula was given by Bhaskar Okay. Now this is, this was discussed last time. The there are two problems that are given here. One is for if you take a trapezium, then you have two parallel sides and you draw two diagonals, they intersect each other at some point, and then you draw two perpendiculars from that point of intersection on the two parallel sides. Now the heights are taken at that, let us suppose these are length of these. Heights are given by Aryabhata and also Aryabhata gives the area of the trapezium. These two formulae are given by Aryabhata in this verse. So, uh, that is what I discussed last time that to get the uh, heights h and h dash as seen in the figure. What we do is we will explain how it is derived there that h upon h dash is equal to uh, top upon base and uh, and one we get h plus h dash upon h dash is equal to top plus base upon base then height upon h dash is top plus base upon base therefore h dash can be obtained as height into total height that is into base divided by sum of top and base. So uh, this is the formula for H dash and you know, for H we can get the formula. So this uh, verse gives you these two heights and H dash for the trapezium. Also the area of the trapezium is given as one half height into top plus base. So this formula given here, 
Okay, and this is a method of irregular uh, trade problem. Uh, so, if we ask if of irregular state uh, are there, then total area if you want to find out, bring them in one rectangle, and from that you can find the uh, area approximately total area approximately. So, area of the rectangle is the product of the two sides. And from that we get another formula which is given here is Haride Chadaja Vishkamba Vena Sa Tunya. So if you are given a if you are given circumference of a circle and then Chadaja, so you divide it to six parts. And then we get this card that is ja, chadhaga ja. So six parts you divide, and for one part, one sixth of the circumference, that card you consider. Then the length of this card is equal to the radius. So vishkamba ardha, vishkamba is diameter, and half of that, that is radius. So this is equal to the radius, ja. So because this triangle actually is a triangle with all sides equal, so every angle is 60 degrees here, and all sides are equal. So radius, radius, and this chord. So the chord is equal to radius. So this information is given here in this work. Now this is the value of in our language pi. So the ratio of circumference of the circle to the diameter, diameter of the circle. So this diameter approximately is given, and uh, the value is given correct to four places of decimal. So <clears throat> here uh, top is ha chaturadikam shatam ashtagunam chaturadikam shatam ashtagunam. So, expression is here 4 plus 100. So, shatam chaturadikam. So, add 4 to 100. That is 104. Then you multiply by 8. Ashtagunam multiply by 8. That becomes 832. Now, dva shakti tatha sarasrana. So, 1000 you take. And then how many 1000 you take? Dva shakti. So, 62. 62, 1000 you take. So it is 62,000. So this 62,000 plus 832 total is 62,832. So this is the number of pain by this description. Chaturadikam, Shatam, Ashtagunam, Dvashashti, Tatha, Sarasrana. Now, this is actually uh, the circumference. Circumference, Brutta Palinaha. So Palinaha is circumference, Brutta is circle. So provided Ayuta Toya Vishkamba. Vishkamba is diameter and Ayuta Toya. So Ayuta is 10,000. Ayuta is 10,000. Ayuta Toya is 20,000. So if 20,000 is the diameter, that means the radius is 10,000. So you take radius 10,000, that is. Diameter is 20,000. Then what is the circumference? The circumference comes out to be 62832. That is what Aryabhata states in this work. That means if you want to find the ratio of these two quantities, 62832 and 20,000, that is our ratio pi that we call nowadays, that comes out to be 3.1416. So, Pi is approximately equal to. And moreover, what Aryavata says is this is asana. Asana is four. So if you do this calculation, we get a value of pi, which is approximately equal to 3.1416. Okay. So uh, I think there is no record in India to greater value of pi before earlier. Uh, now, the next verse that will be there, it will be here. 
finding r sin theta by geometry. So usually nowadays we talk about sin theta, but in the time of uh, ancient mathematicians there, they used to find out r times sin of this angle. But also nowadays we say angle, but they used to say that this is the car corresponding to an arc of a circle. So like in this figure, there is an arc of this circle and the corresponding ja is this and this is ardha ja. So what is the value of this ardha ja? That is the question. Of course, this arc is there and there is angle theta here and this total angle is 2 theta. And ardha ja gives you, this is r, r is the radius of the circle. And theta is the angle. So R sin theta is actually this Ardhajya. So corresponding to A and R, what is the value of Ardhajya? That is the question. And that means R sin theta for us. So R is the radius, and if you want sin theta, then you should divide by the radius. Okay. So in the next verse, I will indicate the method of finding R sin theta of an angle by taking equal arcs of a circle. Or dividing the circle into equal arcs and using triangles and quadrilaterals. Of course, it only says the general method, what they should do. Uh, actual work is left to us. So, Samagupta Parigi Padam. Padam is one four. And uh, so, you take a circle, Gupta is circle. Samagupta probably you have the same kind of radius and you draw the circle. Then Paridhi, Paridhi is circumference and Padam, Padam is one fourth of that. Like we say first quadrant of the circle. So the plan is there we have to do. Now uh, Chinja, Nubuja, Chaturbuja, Chengo. So you take the first quadrant and then you make further divisions equal divisions, for example, uh, by using triangles and quadrilaterals, and then uh, for whatever radius you have, you can get Ardhajya, the Samadhya, Jyarva, is Ardha of Jya, so it is Ardhajya. Uh, which we have just seen for a corresponding R of the circle, you can consider Ardhajya. So, those Ardhajya, whatever you want, you can find out by using some kind of geometry. So, of course, if you want a specific angle theta and corresponding R sin theta, then you have to do certain constructions, you have to do some calculations. But basically, he says that it can be achieved by using properties of angles and quadrilaterals. And it is possible to get those. That is the general statement that Aryabhata is making here. So, Yateshtani, whatever you want, and given the Rishkampa, means given the radius, whatever Ardhajya you want to find out, you can find. That's what he says. Just an example that you have this circle and we have this quadrant, first quadrant of the circle, and you divide it into three equal parts. Once you do that, then you get angles of 30 degrees. And <coughs> then you want to find out uh, sine 60, for example. So sine 60 in this figure is this Pn. This is angle of angle of 60 degrees. This is opposite side is Bn. And then you have to find out this Bn. So you have to uh, look at these various triangles and see. For example, this Bn is equal to OM. If you look at equilateral, these uh, congruent triangles, OCB is congruent to OBN because one side is common and two angles are 90 degrees. So, OM and BN they will be equal. So, you have to find out OM basically. But OM is equal to, so OM square 
is equal to OB square, which is a triangle, right angle triangle OBC. If you take, then OM square is equal to OB square minus BM square. This is BM here. So OB is actually R radius and BM. So BM is equal to half radius because are you telling the previous were saying that this BD is equal to radius because the angles of 60 degrees. It is the one fifth part of the circumference. That means this BM is half the radius. So R by 2 square. So 3 R square upon 4. So R sine 60 is coming out to be root 3 R upon 2. Or if you want just sine 60 that we want nowadays, this root 3 by 2. So this sine 60 we have obtained in this way. So if you want R sine 15, sine 15. So 15 means this is the angle of 30 degrees. So if you want half of this angle, uh, so this is the called AB, which we are considering, and you take its. So this is the R and the corresponding called AB is there, and half of that chord if you take, then that is actually sine of 15 degrees. Half of this chord. So how will you get that? So for that, we have to do again the calculations half of AB, but AB is equal to BC because we are doing calculations for BC, so we can use those. So AB is equal to BC. So half BC. Now BC, this card BC you are considering. So it is Pythagoras theorem, BX square plus MC square. BX square plus MC square is BC square. Out of which BA is known to us, it is R by 2. And MC, MC you have to consider as radius OC minus OM. OC minus OM. So OM is actually known to us, essentially. Uh, BA is known and OB is known. OM is known. OM is already calculated as square root of this 3 R square upon 4. OM is here. So root 3. Uh, root 3 r uh, root 3 by 2 times r is the value of om so bn is equal to r minus root 3 by 2 times r so we get the value of uh, bn like this and bc square uh, which if you find out bc square that is maybe any square so bc square is r square by 4 plus uh, that is BC square is BM square plus MC square and MC we have obtained. So BM square is R square by 4 and MC square is this expression R minus root 3 by 2 R. So square of this is R square plus 3 R square by 4 minus root 3 R square. So this you simplify whole thing and R square is common outside. 2 minus root 3 times r square. This is the value of bc square. bc square is obtained. And uh, therefore, bc is obtained and half of bc we, are, we actually want. So, uh, sin square 15 is 2 minus root 3 is there. 2 minus root 3 upon 2 is there, upon 4. So we have to further divide by 2, so that gives 2 minus root 3 upon 4. And so this is the value of sine square. From sine square, we have to find out sine 15. So to find sine 15, you have to take square root of this, which comes out to be, so root of 2 minus root 3 upon 2, that Comes out to be root of 3 by 2 minus root of 1 half divided by 2 is equal to root 6 minus root 2 by 4. Uh, so these are some calculations that we can do. I mean, sine 15 is root 6 minus root 2 upon 4. So the point is that we can do such calculations through Pythagoras theorem and we can get the sign of certain angles. In this way, sine 30 also can be obtained. Uh, 
in a similar way because Vm here is actually sine of 30, as we know, and Vm we already know it is r by 2. So we get sine 30. Here actually, how to find root of 2 minus root 3? This is also a question. And uh, there is a method of Brahman for this. That you, what you do is you take this 2 and you square it, that is 4. So then you subtract this 3 from that, from the square. So 2 square minus 3 is 1. Take the square root. Square root is 1. Then the answer is 2 plus 1 upon 2 and its square root. So root of 3 by 2. Minus 2 minus 1 upon 2 that is 1 half and its square root. And uh, this is the answer and then divide by 2. So this simplifies to this. So this square root of a quadratic cell you can calculate and for that uh, a systematic method is given by Brahma Gupta, which was also mentioned later by Master. So the Brahma Gupta method of finding square root is useful here. If you get the square of this point, x point. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now this thing is uh, very complicated, but I will tell the idea of this thing that Anamata here in this was tells you. How to find out sine of theta for various values of theta and this will be the formula for this. So, uh, what one does is you take the quadrant, one quadrant, 90 degrees, cross quadrant 90 degrees, and you have 24 parts of this quadrant. And once you do that, you get angles. These angles are smallest one is 3 degrees and 45 minutes or 3 and uh, 3 by 4 degrees. And if you write everything in terms of minutes, then this angle of 3 degrees and 45 minutes, 3 degrees and 45 minutes is exactly to 25 minutes. So this is one angle, smallest angle. And like this, there are 24 angles. So 225 minutes, then 225 into 3. If you get two parts, then you get you get this uh, seven and a half degrees. Then 225 into 3. So twice this angle, four times this angle, and finally 24 times this angle. That is the angle of 90 degrees. So these 24 angles are there with us. And we have to find out the sign of all these uh, all these angles. And uh, here for convenience, the radius is taken as T4 TA, a large radius. And the idea is that the corresponding magnitude of R sine theta. So we want to get sine theta, or in other words, we find out R sine theta. R sine theta is Coming up to get integer, it should take so large radius t4 t8. And the importance of this radius is that if you take this radius t4 t8, then the angle of one minute, if you consider angle of one minute, so 60 minutes that gives you one degree. So angle of one minute, if you take the corresponding arc, then that R has length equal to one unit. So radius is three four three eight units, and this corresponds to the length of the arc as one unit corresponding to the angle of one minute. So this is uh, a tuple of radius actually for this. So this is when you handle capital R radius is actually approximate in the sense that the value corresponding to one minute for the this radius is three four is seven point seventy five approximately. But to get a round number that is integer, it is taken as three four three x. Okay, now 
R sine 225 is given to be obtained by R over times 2 on 5. There are some verses which give these values of uh, R sine this theta, theta is 220 degrees, then 2 times theta, 3 times theta, and 24 times theta. These values are actually instead elsewhere by Aryabhata. But in this, uh, the meaning of that is very complicated for this verse. So we will not go into that. That is because even uh, we should take 24 parts of the first quadrant. That also is not mentioned in this verse. But the explanation uh, that is given is like this. So uh, the formula for the differences of these values, numerators are x1, x2, x3, and so on. And the initial value x1 is 225, and the difference between so d2 is known as x2 minus x1. And the differences after that, uh, they are known by some formula. So d2 is x1 minus x1 upon x1, and d minus d plus 1 minus d that is uh, you get the n plus 1 the difference in terms of previous difference dn and xn upon x1 into d1 minus d2. So d1 minus d2 uh, is actually 1 and so xn minus x1 is uh, x is already calculated and d is already calculated and from that the dn plus 1 value can be obtained. So this is a formula which is given by Aryabhata and uh, it is because you know for sign rule, sign function we cannot have a correct formula. So this formula somehow gives the results approximately uh, but whatever values of sign you get using this formula they are almost correct. So, with good accuracy, you get the values of sign. So, d2 is x1 minus 1, t1 minus d2 is uh, 1, x2 is equal to x1 plus d2. So, x2 is x1 plus d2. That is 4, 4, 9, and so on. So this formula can be used to get the uh, approximate formula and Aryabhata actually lists this formula in another words, which is not in the Ganesh part, but in uh, Gritika part, that words is there, which actually lists the values. But here he tries to give a kind of formula which uh, works for the sign function. Okay. So this was a difficult one, but uh, this is easy again. Here he says, Uttam Bhavedu Sadhya. So how to get a uh, circle? So uh, use the compass and use the compass. By rotating the compass, we can get the circle. Then, Vihidam Vincha Chaturvam Vincha Saranabhya. So, Total actually, uh, I think that uh, you draw small arcs using that compass. So, total, of course, total also means if you take a quadrilateral, you the diagonal of that. So, you use the size and that the diagonal so you can use the Chaturbhuja or quadrilateral. But uh, here, total can also mean. Uh, the arc which we draw within the uh, using the compass. So if you are drawing a triangle, then you do the sides and then you take the distance in the compass equal to the length and then draw the small arcs and their points of interaction they are the vertices of the triangle. Similarly for quadrilateral, you should draw such arcs giving the lengths of the sides and also lengths of the diagonals. 
So then, Sadhya Jalena Samadhi. So, what is that space? How do you decide? So, you can use water, and if you bring level of the water, you can decide whether the farm or some place is Haryana or not, or get the Haryana or not. Similar to Sadhya Jalena Samadhi, so using water, you should test, make a test of whether this space is Haryana. And other problem longer can by using pendulum, you can decide the exact downside and the direction upward and downward direction. You can decide using longer or, or pendulum. Uh, you can decide. So these are all useful for construction. When you are doing construction, you want to know further to thing and the way direction. Upwards and downwards. So for that, he is giving some help in these words. Okay. So the structure is made by terminal compass, that is compass. The primary fertilizer by use of two hypotenuse or arcs or ears. Karma is actually ear, so it corresponds to arc in the possible. Concentration is determined by water and perpendicular by plumbing line uh, or lumber. So, direction exactly upward or downward. Mm -hmm. That you can find out by using a pendulum or this plumbing line. Okay. Now, this is actually again the table of Vashana Pythagoras theorem. Uh, here, you want to find out. So, here, by right, Chanku or Kori and uh, Pramana work on Chanko, Pramana work on all the So you take the height of that cone and take the square of that. So Pramana work on here, in the figure you see this height and it's square in this particular. And Chaya work on here. So there is some shadow of this cone, which is, uh, this is actually some height and then this kind of pole. So, this is the shadow of the pole, and using that shadow and the height of that pole, you can find out this AC. So, this is Pythagoras theorem actually that you find out square of this height plus square of shadow, and as then you get Square square root vargamulu of this sum. So that is this slanted height, which is which is for some reason calling as Vishkam Maharam Swabhasya. So this he says that it is the Vishkam Maharam means radius. Vishkam means Vishkam is uh, diameter and is half. So that is radius. So radius of Swabhutta. So Vutta is circle. So Chaya Se Vutta means shadow, shadow circle. It is the radius of the shadow circle. So probably from this you can draw a circle like this and it is the radius of that. But then radius is somewhat strange for us. Uh, but this is how you, if it is a horizontal plane is there, so on that plane, suppose you want to draw the shadow from all sides, then you can call this as the radius of this. Okay. So, this is the formula that the radius of the shadow circle is equal to square root of height square plus shadow length of the shadow square. This is, this is the version of Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so radius of shadow circle and the square of the height of a normal to the square of a shadow. The square root of this sum is the radius of the shadow circle. This is the words. Now, this is actually trigonometry. So, uh, here we can think of a deeper stumble.
So there is a vapor stover or light tower, and there is shadow of this pole, normal AB. And because of this, there is shadow D1, length of the shadow is D1. And D is the distance between the pole and the light tower. D, this is also D. And H2 is the height of height AB, which is height of this pole. And total height is this H2 plus this H1. Total height is H. And H1 is the difference between height of the light tower and height of the pole. That difference is H1. So the length of the shadow is obtained here, D1. In terms of D, it is the distance between the pole and the light tower. The distance between them is D. The D is used. Then H2 is the height of the normal or height of the pole. And H1 is the difference between the two heights. Difference between the two heights. So here it is said, Shanku Gunam. So, Shanku is this normal AB, that is H2. You multiply this H2 by Shanku Buja Vivaram. So, Shanku is this height, uh, this uh, AB normal, and Buja, this Vipastamba or light tower is called as Buja. And the distance between them is Vivaram. Vivaram is the distance between these two. That is D. So multiply Shanku Gunam is multiplied by what Shanku Buja Vivaram, distance between Shanku and Buja. That is H2. And then what you should do is you should divide by H1. What is that H1? Shanku Buja Yoga Vishesha Rutam. Shanku Buja. So, Shanku is this and Buja is this H and the difference between them that is H1. Okay, H minus H2 that is H1. So, Shanku Buja Yohu Vishesha means you subtract what Shesha or remainder, remaining quantity is there that is H1. And then you divide by Rutam means whatever you had earlier obtained, you divide by this new quantity. Rutam divided by this. So D into H2 divided by H1. H1 is Shanku Buja, Buja Yoga Vishesh. Yet Labdam means whatever you get, Labdam, Sa Chaya, that is Chaya, that is the shadow. So shadow is obtained by this procedure that Shanku means D multiplied by Shanku Buja Vivara is H2 and then divided by Rutam is divided by Shanku Buja Yoga Vishesh. Difference, which is the difference between Shanku and Buja. So Buja is larger, so Buja minus Shanku. You can take the difference, and that is uh, H1. Yet the Dham Sa Chaya Deya Shanku Ho Samula Ki. So Chaya is with Chaya because we will think of this Chaya also. But here it is the Chaya of uh, obtained from. The base of the Shanku. Shanku Samula Chaya. Whatever Chaya means, shallow negate from the base of the Shanku or the normal. That, uh, so this Chaya is D1 obtained by this formula. So, Alevka does not do the explanation of this, but we can do this by looking. Those uh, properties of a triangle and two the triangles and so on, we can do this. Proof uh, <coughs> is very simple. But the final, the use the final formula without actual proof. Okay. So multiply the length of the normal by the distance between the normal and the light pole and divide by the difference between the length of the normal and the length of the like the portion between the length of the shadow measured from the base of the normal. Okay. Now, <clears throat> this is another again uh, trigonometry. 
heights to heights and distances. Uh, you have another possibility that you study in the heights and distances chapter in uh, trigonometry. So here, what is one is there is a Vipastama or light tower, and there are two poles. These two poles are of equal height, H1 and H2, but H1 is equal to H2, that is given to you. So two poles of the same height are there, and there are shadows of these two poles from the this uh, Vipastama, for example, maybe because of sun. You can get seven. So, uh, so before yesterday, was all Sarkha Utiration. So, two normal, they are at the same height. So, it's very equal to H2. Then, how do you get deeper yesterday in Tulsi Buja? So, this is height. So, here he wants to calculate the height of the deeper stumper from, from these. Uh, H1, then K1 is there and S1 is there. S1, uh, H1, S1, and K1. These, these things. So K1 is obtained by a formula, and then within K1, the value of H is obtained. H is the height of the light tower. So <clears throat> Uh, first of all, V by STR. So the two shanku, two normal, normal, they will take the shadows of them. So here, this is one shadow here. Uh, for S1 is one shadow. And then S2 is another shadow. So these two shadows are there, S1 and S2. So then, there are ends of these two shadows. So this is the end of first shadow. This is the end of second shadow. Then the distance between these two ends of the shadow, that is D1. Okay. So this D1 you consider and multiply this D1 by one one shadow, say S1 for example, to multiply this D1 by S1 and divide by the difference S2 minus S1, divided by S2 minus S1. So that gives you this K1. So this K1 is the distance between the base of the light tower, between the base of this light tower, this base, and then this is the end of this shadow. So Chayanda. So from the base of the light tower to the end of this shadow that we are considered. So S2 minus S2. So K1 we are obtaining. By this formula, K1 is equal to D1 into S1 upon S2 minus S1. Now, this K1, uh, you have to further multiply by S1. S1 uh, by H1. H1 is the height of this normal, which is a common height. Most of the normal, they have the same height. H1 equal to S2. So multiply by that and divide by the shadow S1. Divide by the shadow S1. Then that gives you the height of the light tower. So first of all, I find some K1. K1 is the uh, distance between the end of one shadow and the base of the light tower. So that is K1. Once K1 is obtained, you multiply K1 by height of the normal H1 and divide by S1. So uh, S1 is the shadow. That gives you the height of the light tower. So these are two problems. Both the problems we are studying 
in our trigonometry courses which deal with high strain distances. Okay. Ah, now here in the 17th verse, 17th verse says this type of Vyar Vada, Oti Varvashtra, Karna Vada, Saha. This is one verse which tells us that if you take a triangle, then in that Oti is a considering at the height of the right angle triangle and Bhuja is one side. So Bhuja Vada, square of Bhuja. One side and forty one. So forty is height is square. So a square plus b square that is karna varna. So is maha karna varna. So that is the square of the hypotenuse. So this is Pythagoras theorem that is uh, the seventh verse. But its verse versions are already given in the previous verses by Ayam. So the half of this verse will be this Pythagoras theorem statement. And this was of course already obtained by Bodhaya. Bodhaya has stated uh, around 800, 800 BCA, BCA uh, this uh, statement was given there. Then the second part of the verse would say Sarasamvara. So we have a Vutta, it is a circle, a circle is Vutta, and in that Shara Samvarga. So first of all, Shara is arrow, and you draw the diagonal, the diameter of this circle, diameter, and once you draw this, you draw and draw a chord which is perpendicular to that, perpendicular to the diameter. So we get the figure like this. This is like a bow. This part is like a bow. And therefore, this part is like an arrow. Similarly, on the other side, we have a bigger bow, like that, Danushya, like figure, and there is corresponding arrow. So this figure shows us two arrows in two opposite directions. So in the figure, they are written as small a and small b, and the chord is written as c and c. So this 2c is the chord, these are half chords, half chord is c. So c and c, these are half chords. A and b, they are sure or arrows. So many times in geometry, such figures, they used to, these, uh, these line segments, they are called as sure or arrows. So this, this says here, this says Rutte Shara Samvarna. So these two Shara are there and their Samvarna is multiplication. So multiplication of the two arrows is equal to Ardhajya Varna. Ardhajya, this is C, half of the chord and take the square of that. So AB equal to C square is the formula. So Rutte Shara Samvarna, Ardhajya Varna, Satri Samvarna. So in this verse, this Aryabhata gives two formulas. One is Pythagoras term, another is the product of the two parts of the diameter is equal to the square of the half part. So properly that circle also they will study and this is one formula of that type. Now, this is the last thing that we will see today. This is a particular formula which is given by Aryabhata. So, here what happens is two circles are intersecting. And then there is some part which is common to the two circles. Now, this is one diameter and this is another diameter. So, diameters V1 and V2, diameters of the two circles are there. And this is the common part. So the common part of the two diameters of the two circles is called as, as grass. So that is A. So what is A? That is one question. But moreover, if you draw the common part, if you draw the common part, and that intersects this common part of the diameters, then this is the point of intersection. 
and then these two parts of this uh, common part they are AE and EB. Okay, and AE and EB they are not actually equal, they are depending on the radio of the two circles that are considered here. So the aim is to find out the lengths of these line segments A, E, and E. So how that common part is divided by the common cos of the two circles. That is the question which is answered here. So it is kind of called as a rider that he has solved for these two circles. And he has given the answer. Of course, formula is not but the final formula is given here. So if you look at the formula, you see that grass, so there are two, grass is A and there are two parts of the grass, one is A B and another is A B. And the grass is uh, multiplied by C1. C1 is uh, the part of B1 other than this grass. So D1 is the diameter of the first circle. Remove this common part A from that, and what remains is C1. Then, similarly, for the second circle, the diameter is D2, and from the diameter, if you remove this common part, what remains is C2. So, you take multiply this graph by C1 and divide by C1 plus C2. So that is AE. And C2 into A divided by C1 plus C2 is EB. So this uh, EB is the shutter of first circle. And AE is the shutter of the second circle. So if you want to, he says, AB is the shadow of the second circle. To get that, you have to multiply by C1. And if you want to get the shadow of second circle, you have to. So EB is the shadow of first circle. Then you have to multiply by C2. So that is what he is saying. So uh, here, Grasso ne dwe utte. So you subtract grass and multiply by grass. So C1 is grassone. Grass is puna, we subtract it from actually diameter. So that is for me to be understood that grassone is these are two circles. Dwe Gupte means two circles are there. And Grasso ne, Grasso goli, you multiply by Grasso, that is C1 into A, and Bhaje Pusat Krena, separately you divide, separately means for these two uh, circles, you divide separately. Means C1 into A, you divide. C2 into A, you divide. Divide by what? Divide by grassone so grassone so grassone so grasso means this grassone part c1 is grass is a which is subtracted from diameter so whatever remains is grassone c1 is one grassone c2 is another grassone so there sum you you consider c1 plus c2 and you divide by c1 plus c2 so you get two numerators c1 into a and c2 into a both of these both these numbers are divided by C1 plus C2. And what you get is Sampata Sharu Paras Parataha. Sampata Sharu. So these are two Sharu that one is obtained, but they are of one another. So if you uh, take this multiply by C1, then you are getting AE, which is the Sampata Sharu. Sampata Sharu. It is Sharu of the other thing. And if you multiply by C2, which is coming from the second circle, then answer is EB, 
but EB looks in the second circle, but it is actually shadow of the first circle. So he says one another uh, shadow you are getting by this uh, formula. So this is a kind of riser on uh, on these circles, and uh, very interesting answer he has obtained. Okay, so I think we'll stop here. Uh, in this. So basically, uh, in the time of Arnavut, we see that properties of triangles and circles, they were also studied, and many learned about these circles were known uh, to be generations, and they were building all the research in their problem. And all these answers, they are given. How do these answers are very really useful? In uh, the actual applications like this, calculations they will be directly using probably in the astronomical calculations. That is the idea. Okay, so today we will stop here. You know, there are 33 workers in the red bar. So, about half we have covered so After this, there are some other groups. Uh, algebra, some probably like algebraic progression and so on.